So, to start with, I'd like to tell the story of when during an earthquake in 1994 in Los Angeles, some citizens were exposed to star-filled skies for the first time of their lives, with some living it, well, worse than others, as emergency services that night had many calls reporting an alien invasion or a UFO uh, due to the large skies of the large cloud overhead. Now, this was the same cloud I saw for the first time about three years ago with my cousin in the Austrian Alp, which remained an unforgettable night. It was also the first time that I asked myself the question that has now become the title of this talk. Why have I, why have I never seen this? Because this cloud is one that everyone is supposed to see. In fact, it was the common view of all our ancestors, because this cloud of stars is the Milky Way, the galaxy in which our solar system is, and that we cannot see anymore due to light pollution. Hello, my name is Glenn, and today I will be talking about the effects of light pollution and how we can limit, in, how we can limit its impacts on the Earth and on humans. So, how did I discover what light pollution was? I was scrolling through YouTube about four years ago when I saw a video titled How to Observe and Photograph the Milky Way. I clicked on it and was hooked. So hooked that the same night I went on and tried to do the exact same here in Luxembourg. However, instead of the thousands of stars I was supposed to see, I only saw about 10 of them, with, for people that are watching the live stream, can see in the picture, a very strong yellow glow to it, and that is light pollution. What the picture is great uh, to see is the effects of light pollution that we see on a day-to-day -day basis. We see very few stars, and the clouds are often illuminated at night with that same yellow glow. It is quite sad that we're missing out on true dark skies, as psychologist from Berkeley, Keltner, found that when exposed to dark skies, people actually scored higher on scientific reasoning. It also had better mental health impacts, with participants being more altruistic, kinder, and have overall better interactions with others. Sadly, this light pollution might even get worse in the future. Or today, it already uh, it has been estimated by Fauci that about 99% of Europe experiences some degree of light pollution. And it could get worse with LED lights, as these are cheaper to use, so people keep them on for longer. But also because of the color they emit, which is that white, bluish color. There are two main reasons why this color is problematic. First one being that it gets reflected more easily, resulting in more light pollution, so less visible stars. Another problem, as indicated by Long Core and the Royal Society Publishing, is that it affects humans even more. Now, you may ask, how can light be detrimental to my health? Well, as described in the Harvard Health Publishing, it could increase risks of obesity, diabetes, cancer, depression, and insomnia. This is due to one main factor, is that artificial light disturbs our internal clock, the circadian rhythm which is responsible for the release of the hormone that makes you sleepy, melatonin but also controls many other reactions in the body. Exposure to light shifts our circadian rhythm because it was originally based from the sun, and nowadays our nights are full of artificial light. Now, an example of the harm of light pollution you probably encounter frequently 
or sometimes, could be getting a midnight snack. Now, this is because the circadian rhythm also controls the release of another hormone, leptin, which decreases hunger so that your sleep is not disturbed by the desire to hunt and eat. And if it gets disturbed, then this hormone gets released in lower doses, resulting in increased hunger. Another effect, as shown in a study conducted by Harvard, was that when there were many shifts in that circadian rhythm, people had higher blood sugar, with participants even being in pre-diabetic stages. The, the increased risks of depression could be explained by the lack of sleep people get. They cannot fall asleep as easily because that sleep hormone, melatonin, is not released. Sadly, light pollution doesn't just uh, affect humans, it also affects animals. For example, in Florida, sea turtles coming out of their eggs are often found dead, not only killed by predators or like seagulls, as they normally do, but instead we would see them disoriented. Sea turtles use moonlight to know where the ocean is that they should go towards, which is a hard thing to do when the coast is filled with artificial light from buildings. Not knowing where to go, they would either stay on the beach, get eaten by predators or die from exhaustion, or they would go towards roads and those buildings emitting artificial lights and get run over by cars. It has even been shown that artificial light is now the greatest threat to sea turtles hatchling in the Caribbean. Now, I don't want to make you think that I am against artificial light. It is arguably one of the greatest inventions. I am here today because, even though it may sound contradictory, we can limit light pollution without turning off the lights. It's all about reducing wasted light, light which is emitted somewhere where it is not needed, which accounts for 50% of light from street lights. For example, in Florida, to limit the problem of sea turtles hatchling, they would reduce wasted light by lowering light poles, uh, using motion sensors, avoiding any sort of light that directly um, is emitted towards the sky or any sort of things like that, so like floodlights. And as a last resort, they would shield lights, which is when surfaces are put to enclose the light bulb so that it is only so that light is only emitted where it is needed. Measures are not only taken internationally. They're, always, they're also taken nationally. For example, here in Luxembourg, the National Park de Lure is acting in nine towns where awareness is raised and 10,000 light poles are or will be replaced. Now, as an individual, you can protect yourself from blue light by avoiding any sort of blue light from your screens or other electronic device by using a setting against it, which is found in nearly every electronic device nowadays. Also, prefer any warm light before you go to sleep, even red light if you can. Um, for outside lighting, use timers, motion sensors, or dimmers, and, well, a measure you probably already take to limit your bill, only use necessary light. Now, I'll leave you today for people online with a picture of my first attempt uh, at, sh of my first successful attempt at shooting the Milky Way on that night I mentioned in my introduction. And I hope that you're now more informed about this issue and more aware of what to do to protect yourself. I also hope that 
you're more uh, willing to look at the stars more often and enjoy the free show you can have. Thank you for your attention.